Hey guys, what's up? It's Terror Dog. Welcome back to GT Sport. Alright, so I got a special video for today on Christmas Day. And no, it's not a Christmas special. We're doing something different today. It's about two weeks ago on the 13th, to be exact. I started a new project. This is a, a project that could be used. Um, how to explain this? The idea is I'm working to create a mobile app that will act as a companion app to this game. The main idea is to bring back the performance points that were used in GT6 and in GT5 to help balance cars. Now, GT Sport already has balance of performance, but that is only within a class. So I can't, for example, um, here we go. If I go with, um, yeah, here we go. You can't run a Porsche Taycan, right, against an N700 car, even though, and have balance of performance in a lobby, even though it would make sense to do so, because it's in the Group X. Now, unfortunately, what I'm doing won't work because I don't have the graph to do it. So the way this works, Ideally, you're going to be seeing some screenshots of my pro of my process here, with with what I'm doing and code and stuff. Is I come in here, I come into the settings, and I take a screenshot. And from this screenshot, I can upload the image of this screenshot into a web tool that will reverse engineer the data points in the torque curve. And then I can use that to get the area under the torque curve. And I do some fancy math, and between that, the weight, and the arrow, I get a number, which is the performance points, or PP, for the car. So I'm taking all of the performance, considering everything that the engine, all of the engine capability, and not just one number like peak power, or two numbers like peak power and peak torque, or, or the power band itself, which is rather narrow with this car, by the way. So you're considering the entire engine as a whole. Which, if I understand how it worked in GT5 and GT6, I believe that is what they did. But there's something tricky going on because my scaling isn't working out quite the same and I believe they may have added some other scaling factors to keep everything nice below 1000 instead of having well for example a group 1 car being at like 3000 pp which is exactly what we're going to do so yeah I'm doing this all in one take, unscripted, so bear with me. So, I've reached the point where... Okay, now I don't know how to make a mobile app. I know Java. So I decided, well, let me write this as a Java application first. I haven't compiled it or anything. I'm just running off the source code in Eclipse. And, um... I've gotten to a stage where... It reads a car list. It filters based on the max PP the car can achieve, the max horsepower the car can achieve, and the minimum weight the car can achieve based on whatever regulations you want to choose. And then from that list, you can select a car. Ideally, I'll get to that eventually. Right now, I'm just in testing, so I'm just tuning all the cars at once to whatever specification I want. The whole remaining list. So, at this point, I'm tr I want to test the PP. So, if we come in here, super form I'm going to see if I can get the super formula to be about the same as a Group 1 car. 
So in a normal lobby, using the normal lobby settings, this would be impossible because group 1 and group X are different classes and so BOP would not work. You would not be able to run these in a, in a lobby that is specific to one class and so you would not be able to apply BP. So um, it would be all kinds of messy. All right, so let's make a new tune and this will be 3000 PP. We're gonna leave everything else stock for now and just get the PP that I want. And we're also going to run the same tire because my system I'm trying to stay similar to GT6, or more actually GT5, which actually penalized cars that had aero. So basically, the more aerodynamics, the more you upped your aerodynamics, the higher your PP went, which meant that you could have road cars and race cars racing each other, and while the race car would be faster around the corners, the road car will still keep up or even surpass actually would have to surpass in the straights and they would have an even viability on the same tire at the same pp so here we go so to get 3000 pp using my formula on the super formula i need to cut power to 87 percent which means i need to level this up And I need to add weight to 116%. So means I need to level this up. And then for the downforce, to get the maximum downforce allowed for 3000 PP, I need to set my front arrow to 1314. Oh yeah, that's right, the tuning, I have auto-tuning in this program that I'm working on. Which uh, will automatically tune your downforce evenly between the front and rear. So, obviously, there would be functions where you could manually tune and it would spit out the PP to, so that you could say, okay, well, or, or check it against the APP setting that you want to check against. So we're going down to 1814. Okay. And then, um. Do I want to mess with the transmission? I probably should. Just so we can even that out. So we're going to use the custom transmission. We're going to change into this car so that I could find it easily. And now we're going to go into the Peugeot 908 HDI. What a mouthful of a name. Okay. Did I select the correct one? Yes. Okay. So once again, 3,000, 3,000 only PP. And to get this car set up right, I need to increase power to 119%. Sets weight to 86%, so I'll need to level this up. Get rid of that. Don't want that. Oh, do I want mediums or hards? I'll need to use the same tire, obviously. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards hards just because of less grip will be easier to, to work with in this case. Um, I'm not used to a medium tire, I think, is what would be easier, actually. All right, um, for front arrow, I need 818. So yes, I also had um, 
had it set up where you can set priority for how you want the car to be tuned. So do you want to prioritize power, weight, or aerodynamics? And right now I'm prioritizing weight, and then power, and then downforce. So that's why everything is getting reduced downforce. 1368 for this car. And now we want to, yeah, same top speed auto set. Okay. So, it's time to begin doing some test laps. There. I'm going to switch these to racing hard. And let's just take a look at the graph here on the bottom left. Okay, so interesting. So as you would expect, this car has to use it, rely on having a higher top speed to keep up with the super formula. So um, we'll see how this goes. This um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna start at Nerb GP first because it's a fairly short track, and then after that, I'll figure out what I want to do from there. I want to eliminate error in this test, so I'm going to try and stick with a shorter track, a track that I'm very, very comfortable with as well. And um, yeah, things could change up from there, so we'll see what happens. All right, this gives me a great excuse to uh, to drive in VR as well, so uh, let's get to that. All right, so I said I was going to go to Nurburgring GP. Turns out I've never taken anything as straight as a group one car there before, and I was really thrown off. So here we are, 3000 pp, group one car, at Le Mans. So let's see what happens here. Okay, first things for... I've noticed is um, I need to up the transmission setting or up the speed on it. So we're gonna go for we're gonna set it to 230.
right now. Obviously, that isn't the best lap I could do with this car, but that's okay. So, now that I have the ghost, we're going to try and see if I can beat, well, see how close I get to this lap. And we're just going to go back and forth between the Super Formula in this car. So I'm going to save this lap replay and then change car. So, um, the other thing to consider, so I want to make sure that I get the transmission matched up. Is that at 230? I probably could raise the top speed even more since I didn't realize that was going to go all the way to 280. Um, so maybe in the next run, because I do want to see if the added power of the group one car is helping and part of that part of seeing that will be in the top speed so with its speed being capped the way it is it's going to make things tricky and actually um, I need to make sure The halo will get in the way, but it does not because I'm in VR and I have two eyes and there's only one halo. So I can kind of just see through it. Unless I look directly at it or look past it. The car does feel very underpowered compared to the group one car, which is good. So nice if I can see my ghost. The game's not cooperating. So nice if I can see my time. My ghost, whatever, I mean. If I can uh, see if I'm actually catching up or not. And I can break the ventilator. At least I can see what my time is on the wheel. Of the track. Sitting like lower than what I should be. I might reset the, the camera thing. Oh wow, that speed just dumps all so fast. Horse curves are going to be interesting. I'm going to see if maybe. What I should be doing is using a Red Bull, Red Bull braking references in this setup.
that's it's not a 314. It's really bugging me that I can't get this ghost to work the way it, it should. It, it, it just it won't show. I, it was not letting me load my ghost. So obviously that test was an absolute colossal failure. Now let's take a look at why that is. So look at these numbers here. We have 556 horsepower, 833 horsepower, similar weight. We do have plenty of downforce, 1,300, 1,800 here, and 800-something, 1,300 there. But still, you're looking at about one and a half times the power, roughly, a little more, compared to this car. Even though this car, this Super Formula car here, has, you know, it, its downforce is about the same as a Red Bull car, right? It, not quite as high as its max, but it's in the range. So it does have significant amounts of grip. It can get around the corners really, really fast, but it just it loses out so much on the straights that it just doesn't matter. Now, why did that happen? So when I first tested my program before jumping into live testing or road testing or whatever, whatever you want to call it, whatever this is, um, I tested with with the PP but also with a power and weight restriction. And everything seemed to work fine, although I don't remember actually looking to see if I checked the actual power and weight figures. The weight does, you know, it gets close with the PP, which is nice. But look at this power discrepancy here. Now, these cars, they're not usual cars. They are very much race cars, as, as much race cars as a race car can be. So let's look at some more normal sorts of cars. Which is why we're looking at these three Supras here, because the Supra exists as a road car, as a Group 4 car, and as a Group 3 car. So the idea is for the PP system to work right, this Supra should have just as good a chance as win at winning as this Supra and this Supra in a race among the three. Now for that to happen, we need a power and a weight to be roughly equal, but then well, what happens if you make power and a weight roughly equal? Well, you still have all of this downforce to take into consideration from the Group 3 car plus this little bit of downforce, you know, it's kind of a mid-ground, but still significant compared to our road car that the Group 4 car has. So the PP system takes the downforce into account, and not just the power and the weight. So the idea is to test this. We need to see, well, will I have to drop down force and drop power and add weight in these race cars enough that this car keeps up with them. And so what happened was I added them. I, uh, you know, I, I went and I did the thing that I talked about at the start of the video with, uh, getting the, the graphs, using the web tool, making my CSV files for my uh, torque curve data, and um, plugging the data of the cars into the list, running the program, and it found that this stock, this well, regular plain GR Supra can go up to 1,155 PDP performance points. And um, and so the way it worked out is that all of these these Supras should be able to tune to 1,000 pp. Now, when I ran my program to tune, what happened was 
and hopefully I'm showing a screenshot here. The um, something went screwy with the code and it dropped the weight on this to its minimum setting and it boosted the power all the way up. Now I just said max PP on this car is 1155 and you can see there's no arrow so that is calculated without aerodynamics 1155 so we have a problem here where it's tuning to the to its max PP and it's telling me it's at 1000 so I suspect something similar happened with these two so it's gonna be back to the drawing board for now until I can figure out why my numbers aren't working out the way they should be so I guess this concludes day one if we can call this that, day one of video documentation of what I hope will be a companion mobile app for this game. Okay, that's going to do it then. Subscribe if you want to see a continuation of this series. And uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.